this is Jim Nalen, liturgical guitarist. And this is lesson four on the fretting or left hand for me, for me um, exercises. And this is trills, playing trills. Trills are, the, um, are uh, the kind of thing where you're going, that's a trill. Uh, basically it's combining a hammer on and a pull-off, which in classical terminology is an ascending and a descending slur. So now we've got the nomenclature out of the way. The exercise one, we're gonna we're gonna do all of these exercise one here in the fifth position on the second string. So your first finger's on the Fifth fret, second finger on the sixth, third finger on the seventh, little finger on the eighth fret of the fifth string. So the first thing we're doing here is just um, a series of pull-offs and hammer-ons. You're gonna pluck the first note, and that's all you're gonna pluck here in these first two measures. And uh, that's the first measure of it. So let's talk about the technical aspects of a hammer-on and pull-off. First off, it, it requires a lot of strength. This 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 first one here, this um, exercise, but the where you're hammering on and pulling off with your little finger. For most of you, or for many of you, your little fingers are weak and you need to strengthen those. So this is a great exercise for that. You also need to have some, some hefty calluses to play trills and, and these hammer-ons and pull-offs and make them sound good and musical. And this exercise, um, these exercises will help you develop your calluses too because you're really working your fingers and, and developing those muscles. So, most guitarists, when they first do any kind of hammer-ons and pull-offs, they're pretty good on the hammer-on. They know that you just got to slam the finger down on the string. And the harder you slam the finger down, the more volume you get. And if the, string, if the notes play it at first, then you've got energy built in there. So when you hammer on, you get more volume than I do if I just hammer on a dead string, or a silent string. So, but a pull-off, generally people just think pull-off is just lifting your finger off. And you'll hear the sound here. I'm not getting much sound by just lifting my finger off. The key in a pull-off, and is if you look in the, the close-up, is when you come off the string, you pull down into the next string. So really on these trills, and then you have, to, you have to lift off that string, come back up, and hammer on again. So you have to, ha to get a strong hammer on, you have, to be, you have to lift those fingers a lot further than what we've been working on, trying to keep them a quarter to a half an inch from the string. You're not gonna get as good a hammer on. Sometimes you need to get a lot of energy in that hammer on. So, the hard part for most of you is going to be the pull-off. So, it's, if you think of your fingertip, it's making almost kind of a circular motion. It's not just up and down. It's down and parallel to the fretboard into that string and then come off that string without, without making a sound. One way I help to do that is uh, my first finger is actually kind of laying down sideways. So my first finger is muting the first string. I'm muting that with this first finger. I'm, I'm not straight up and down here. I'm kind of laying it over. So it mutes that string so that when I, when I come off the string, uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting a note there. So, 
that's the technical aspect of it. So what you're going to do is exercise one, and I would play these very slow. And you do it four more times there. Then the next one, the last two measures on that first line are the third and second fingers. So now we're going to hammer on. We're going to play the, the, the seventh fret. Do a pull off. Hammer on with that one. And I'm not worried about what my little finger's doing at this point. It's going to flail a bit, especially as I lift up for to get energy in that uh, hammer-on. But the same motion, the same kind of circular motion releasing off the string. So that's the last two measures of that first line. The uh, next line is the first and second fingers. Um, so I hammer-on with my second finger. This is probably the easiest one for most people. And then the last half of that line is the third and first. So I'm going to do, so now I might, my second finger is lifted off the fretboard. I'm doing the third finger first. You notice my first finger is still damping or silencing the first string so that because otherwise you can get noise when, from, when you lift off your lift off the uh, hammer on or the pull off. I'm sorry. So that's um, then we go to the third line, and the first two measures there are fourth and second. So now my third finger is hovering over. It's not playing. And I'm just doing my third finger and my second finger. As you're doing these, you probably notice your hands getting tired. <laughs> Don't do these to the point where you get painful. You know, gets gets painful, or you're, you know, you're hurting your muscles. These are small little muscles here that we're working, and you don't want to overwork them. Do a little bit each day. <laughs> I think I mentioned earlier. I used to practice scales 45 minutes a day. And uh, I think trills were maybe five minutes would be all I would work on on trills. It's not it's not something you're gonna um, master right off. You got to get, but it's gonna really go a long way to building the strength in your fingers. And so then the last half of that third line is your fourth finger and your first finger. This is a really good one for developing accuracy on that little finger. And remember, as always, we've talked about, see all that space in between my palm and my, and, and, the, and the fretboard here? I'm not up against there. If you're doing that, you, there's no way you can get this kind of sound or this kind of power in your fingers. So then I give you some exercises at the end there, and these are a little challenging. Uh, for what they're worth, give them a try. Here, the first one here. Let's see. This is exercise two. Um, I'm playing a C chord. So I'm 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 pl plucking the 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 C bass. Let's bring that up a little bit. Holding this bass note down here. Notice the challenge here. Okay, right now, when I'm pulling off of this first finger, it's easy. It's easy to 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 come down into the first string and and just go past it. And then I'm I'm making both strings ring. I don't I don't want that sound. So I have to I don't have any other finger to dampen that string. 
So I have to dampen it with my first finger. I go into it and then I lift it straight off without making sound. It's hard to hear this on the mic. That was a good one. So I'm doing that while I play a C chord. So. And then, um, then I'm playing a G over B. And hammering on now. The same hammer on there. Then uh, A bass. Uh. And then a G bass. Uh. Uh. That last measure is tricky. You got some, um, actually, the last two measures. You've got some uh, trill things kind of going there, like on that A, the, the third measure, the A bass. You got. I'm playing three notes there, and I'm only plucking the first one. The and same thing. It's a double pull off. I'm pulling off my little finger. Uh, my little finger's playing the, this is in the start of the third, third beat of that third measure. Little finger to the first finger and then pull off the, the uh, first finger. And then the last measure is a, a double hammer on. That's a tricky one there. Uh, oh wait, I'm doing it. Yeah, third finger. So I'm playing the G bass, hammer on, and then my little finger. This works better up to tempo. It, it's slow like this, you're not gonna get a lot of sound. Another, a hammer on pull off, and a pull off. So anyway, that's one exercise. Uh, See if I can play it. I haven't practiced, looked at this for years. Uh. Like that, and then it would sort of. 